Hi everyone, welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. This is the EVGA NVIDIA GeForce GTX 690, and this is the video where I benchmark it. We're going to start off with some close-ups of the card while I go over the specs one more time, just because it is such a nice-looking video card, and why not? Why not? Why not take another close-up look at it? So what you get with the GTX 690 is effectively two GK104 GPUs, and uh, they are located here and here. Those are the same cores that are used in the GTX 680. Uh, they're underclocked slightly, and you get two of them on the same card. So what you effectively have here in a single video card is an SLI setup uh, close to or effectively what you would get with two GTX 680s. I've gone with an entire enclosed custom cooling solution for this. They have dual, dual vapor chambers right here. Uh, they have some plexiglass windows so you can actually look through and see the vapor chambers. I love that because it lets you look at the actual cooling fins. Also, just from a practical perspective, if you have been using the card for a while, you can look in there and see how much dust build, build up you have and uh, give you a bit better of an idea when it is time to take the video card out and give it a good cleaning. So it's actually effective and useful in that respect as well. Uh, you do need some sufficient power for this card. You have two 8-pin PCI Express power connectors, so make sure you've got a, a uh, power supply that can handle that. And uh, let's talk a little bit about specs. So the core clock on each GPU is 915 megahertz, and it has a boost clock of 1,019 1, megahertz. Now, since I've actually been running this card through some benchmarks and monitoring the boost clocks, uh, bo the way boost clock works is it will work within a thermal threshold. So as long as the uh, GPUs aren't getting too hot, it will use the boost clock. And apart from the listed 1,019 megahertz boost clock, uh, this card out of the box actually got up to 1,071.3 megahertz, maintained that for some extended periods of time while I was running through my benchmarks. So uh, you can't actually exceed the boost clock that you see listed in the specs. So that's nice. Uh, you also get tons of CUDA cores with this. You get 1,536 for each GPU, so that gives you 3,072 total. They've also doubled up the amount of memory that you get from one, G, uh, from one 680 to two, of course. So you get four gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, uh, runs up 1,500 megahertz. That's 192 gigabytes per second effective memory bandwidth. Uh, that runs on a dual 256-bit memory bus. You get a total texture fill rate with this card of 117 gigatexels per second, which is pretty massive. So now that I've gone over all those specs for you guys, uh, let's also talk about our today's, today's benchmarks that we're going to be running, because I tried to give sort of a unique benchmark perspective on the 690, and that is I actually ran this card on two different test beds. There are two platforms right now where you can actually get PCI Express 3.0 connectivity. That is the 2011 socket, uh, which is Intel X79 chipset motherboards, or you can go with the recently released uh, Ivy Bridge CPU uh, or third generation Intel core processor in combination with a Z77 chipset, um, and that will give you full PCI Express 3.0 connectivity. So, ran this on two test beds. One is our primary test bed here, which is based on a Sabertooth X79 motherboard, and that's a 3960X processor. Uh, ran that at stock and ran the benchmarks on that system and then ran them also on my new personal system which is uh, also an Asus Sabertooth but this time a Z77 motherboard with an Intel Ivy Bridge Core i7 3770K processor to see what the difference is running them on one platform or the other.
Another cool feature of this card is that the GeForce GTX logo on the side actually glows when the card is powered on. So here's a look at it in my Z77 test bed with the logo all glowy and stuff. So those are our benchmarks, and hopefully you guys learned a little bit more about the performance of the GTX 690 when running all by its lonesome. I should mention that if you've got enough money, you can get two of these. It's got a single SLI connector that will allow you to run two of them and have essentially a quad SLI setup with two video cards. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, Temperature-wise for our benchmarks, the hottest we saw this video card get was 79 degrees Celsius, and uh, that was actually with a maximum fan speed of 57%, so even a little bit of additional cooling available for this card, even though we are running pretty high-resolution benchmarks. Now, I did want to point out that comparison-wise, uh, from the Z79 chipset to the Z77 chipset, socket 2011 to socket 1155, really not much of a, of a performance difference. We saw a little bit of change in the scores and the 3D Mark tests, and that is because 3D Mark actually has some CPU specific tests and it does weight that into the score so definitely with the 3960X uh, you get extra cores, you get faster speed overall, you have quad channel memory so there you're going to get higher scores whenever you take the CPU into consideration. For the gaming benchmarks the scores were essentially neck and neck the whole way down so um, if you're running this card in a, similar, in a uh, setup similar to what we ran, uh, it's really not going to matter whether, the, whether you go with the higher-end enthusiast Intel platform for PCI Express Gen 3, or if you want to run their mainstream platform with Ivy Bridge uh, Z77 chipset. And uh, for those of you who are still running P67 or Z68, uh, if you did, do have an Ivy Bridge processor and drop it into one of those systems, that does give you PCI Express Gen 3 support. Uh, you just need to double check with your motherboard manufacturer to make sure that it has the proper uh, ICs on the board to make sure you can upgrade to PCI Express Gen 3. So if you are looking to get this card, uh, even with uh, one of the existing platforms, you don't need to go with the highest end Intel enthusiast platform. You can still get effectively the same results. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the EVGA NVIDIA GeForce GTX 690 video card with two GK104 GPUs. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel, and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.